Scarface is the queen of the beasts in Nakuru National Park, but she has a checkered past. In her youth, she was one of Kenya's big bad cats, a killer of sheep and cattle. She could have been shot, but she had luck on her side. Ten years ago, Nakuru Park was turned into a rhino sanctuary and completely surrounded by an electric fence. Prey animals were abundant, so the park was an ideal place to relocate stock-killing lions. Scarface was brought to the park as part of an ongoing experiment. Instead of being a victim of a marksman's bullet, she became the founder member of the Nakuru Pride. The Nakuru Pride is special in many ways, but their tree climbing abilities are the most obvious. Most lions don't clamber about in trees. Perhaps the spreading branches of the acacias here encourage climbing skills. At the southern end of the park, an isolated and impressive rocky outcrop marks the core of the Nakuru Pride's territory. From this high vantage point, Scarface watches for the other members of her pride. The two lionesses, Tamu and Kali, are six years old and daughters of Scarface. They're both about to come into season and are being closely followed by the two pride males. Like Scarface, the pride males were once bad cats which killed domestic stock outside the national parks. They're about nine years old and were brought to Nakuru many years ago. Scarface calls to gather her family. Lions are social cats and like to stay in contact with each other at all times. About 12 years old, Scarface is past her prime. Her teeth are worn with age. The bald patch on her nose and black scar above her right eye make her easily recognizable. The stability of the pride rests with the lionesses. Bonds between related females are strong. Scarface and her adult daughters, Tamu and Kali, all gave birth a year ago. Between them, the lionesses had eight cubs, which are now almost as big as their mothers. Four of them are female. Scarface is the mother of three of the cubs. The other five are her grandchildren. Tamu and Kali came into Estrus, and they left Scarface to care for all the cubs. Looking after eight adolescents alone is hard work, but to Scarface's credit, the cubs look fat and healthy.
In Nakuru National Park, warthogs are very common and are the lion's main prey. Scarface is teaching the cubs to hunt. The young males let their sisters do most of the work. Scarface knows that one small warthog will not feed the whole family. She makes no attempt to claim her share. The young males have no such qualms. As soon as a kill is made, they use their size and strength to muscle in on the catch. Their sisters will be lucky to get anything for themselves. Scarface's family is the only pride in Nakuru. Although they're free to roam throughout the park, they rarely venture far from their home range in the south. Nakuru National Park covers an area of 188 square kilometers. In the north end lies the Soda Lake, for which the park is famous. Every year, up to a million flamingos fly in to feed on the algae-rich waters. Crowned cranes come at the start of their breeding season to court and dance. Living here in the north end of the park is a coalition of young bachelors. These young males are not yet mature. Now they're biding their time and keeping a low profile. These two bachelors are brothers, and they were born in Nakuru. A third member of the coalition was another stock killer, a bad cat that was introduced into the park. These three bachelors are a serious threat to Scarface and her family. 
there are no other lionesses in the park to breed with. If the bachelors are to have any chance of reproducing, sooner or later, they must challenge Scarface's pride males. Twenty kilometers to the south, Scarface, still with eight cubs in tow, is looking for food. As part of the Nakuru experiment, it was hoped that the buffalo herds might be controlled by introducing predators. But the lions aren't killing the buffalo, and Nakuru now has the highest density of these animals in Africa. Scarface won't tackle a large herd of these dangerous beasts when there are smaller prey around, but the youngsters have the confidence of youth. Their rash move angers the buffalo. Most lions would keep running, but Scarface is an Akuru lion. Her position is precarious. She's only just out of reach. If she fell now, she'd be gored to death. Only as night begins to fall do the buffalo give ground. Hours spent crouching up a tree have left Scarface sore and stiff, but at least she's alive. The cubs can't manage without her just yet. In the southern end of Nakuru National Park, Scarface's pride males leave the remains of a kill to the vultures. Something else has attracted their attention. Pride males can sense that Tamu and Kali, Scarface's adult daughters, are in season. Kali is pursued by one male, while Tamu pairs up with the other. Kali is not yet ready to mate. To avoid her suitor, she does what by now might be expected of an Akuru lioness. But in Nakuru, even a heavy and relatively cumbersome mature male can climb trees.
Unlike most other cats, courtship among lions can be amiable, even affectionate, but only when both partners are consenting. When Carly tries to move out of reach, her consort finds himself out on a limb. Tamu will mate repeatedly for the next three days and may become pregnant. Finding himself in a difficult position has not discouraged the second pride male, but his advances are rebuffed. The other pride male, Tamu's suitor, makes a bid to claim both females for himself. If Kali isn't ready to mate for a few days, he may even successfully pair with both sisters. Nakuru is bordered on all sides by settlements. There are two fences here. The inner one is electrified and carries enough charge to repel a rhino. It's there as much to protect the people on the outside as the wildlife within. Because the park is fenced, the number of prey animals is high. The lions could go for many different species, but they don't. These lions hunt warthogs. Over enthusiastic. During the chaos and confusion, all their prey disappears. But Scarface has seen it all before. She knows the way of the warthog and how to unearth them. The cubs learn from her example, but the hole is deep. Again, it's the young males that claim the lion's share. Scarface is still not feeding until her charges have eaten their fill. Since this pride preys on warthogs, which are relatively small, there's often nothing left for Scarface. While the cubs are growing, Scarface is getting perilously thin. The lions retire to digest their meal in the shade. Not all trees are suitable for climbing. The cub disturbs a swarm of bees he gets stung, but it's Scarface who bears the brunt of the angry insects. Pride Rock has been the birthplace of all the cubs born in the park. It's the perfect hideout for a lioness with tiny cubs. 
There are now two additions to the bride. Tamu has recently had young. At this age, lion cubs are vulnerable. Tamu will keep them concealed in the rocks for several weeks. Leopards have been known to kill lion cubs, but these individuals are preoccupied. When these solitary cats come together to mate, unlike lions, they're nervous of each other. Many of these leopards were once bad cats that killed sheep and calves. About 30 have been introduced into Nakuru. Leopards are designed for climbing trees. Lighter and more agile than lions, even the males are completely at home in the branches. After spending several days alone with her cubs, Tamu joins her sister. Kali is pregnant and will soon give birth. The sisters will raise their offspring together. Kali is an experienced hunter and has killed hundreds of large warthogs. Perhaps because she's pregnant and less able to dodge the warthog's tusks, this time she makes a wrong move. The gash is deep. Kali's chances look slim. She can barely walk, let alone hunt. Most cats hate rain, but there's no stopping youthful exuberance. By now, the cubs are competent hunters, and Scarface has at last been getting enough to eat.
Remarkably, Carly too is still alive. She's only survived because of her close bond with her sister. Carly's wound is healing, but slowly. She's still finding it painful to walk, and hunting is out of the question. Tamu is now doing all the hunting. Surprisingly, she drops her catch. Is it that she can't resist the chase? Kali picks up Tamu's first kill. The carcass is small, but it'll keep her going for now. Kali is surviving, but she's not out of danger yet. Until her wound heals, she won't be able to hunt for herself. Kali should have given birth by now, but there is no sign of cubs. In the north, the three bachelors are on the move. They're five years old now and reaching maturity. The time has come for them to look for females. They head south towards Scarface and her family. At Pride Rock, the Pride males roar to proclaim their ownership of the territory. Undeterred, the bachelors continue to advance. Bachelor's challenging roars stop the pride males in their tracks. Three against two is no contest. During takeover bids, male lions can kill each other. Outnumbered, the pride males run to avoid confrontation. The bachelors are close behind. They stop to pick up the scent of their fleeing rivals. The pride males have reached the edge of the park. Exhausted and trapped by the fence, they can run no further. The bachelors have tracked their enemy to the boundary. But here, strange smells distract them from the chase. The scent of the females is strong. The three bachelors have won without bloodshed. There are now new kings at Pride Rock.
The sounds of unfamiliar roars have alerted Tamu to imminent danger. After a takeover, the new males must kill all small cubs if they're to mate with their mothers. With their babies gone, the lionesses will come into season a short time afterwards. Tamu frantically tries to save her offspring. The cubs were never seen again. Commotion during the night has alarmed Scarface's pride. Of the eight cubs, only the four young lionesses are still with Scarface. Their brothers have fled. These young females have never seen strange males before. They're both attracted and scared. The bachelors have achieved their goal. But now they too are unsure how to behave. The situation is tense. Amorous intentions turn into aggression. <laughs> Even the strong bonds between the male coalition are put to the test. This young lioness is totally bewildered. The new kings stake their claim to the pride. Scarface has lived through a previous takeover and knows how to behave. Her experience will make this transitional period easier for the younger lionesses. In the north of Nakuru National Park, the lake has dried out. During the dry season, many animals suffer because they're fenced in and can no longer migrate. But the changing seasons have little effect on the Nakuru lions. Their prey is now abundant all year round. The four male cubs fled to the north when Scarface's pride was taken over. During their 20-kilometer trek, they became separated. Their roars to find each other carry far and wide. The young males are in unfamiliar territory and need one another's support. Their calls have not gone unnoticed. The bachelors have followed them north.
the new kings will not tolerate any other males in their territory. The bachelors mean to drive their rivals away, and they have size and might in their favor. But when three of the young males gang up against the single bachelor, the tables are turned. The fourth young male, though, is left alone. One on one, he doesn't stand a chance. When one of his brothers returns to help, the bachelor is momentarily distracted. It's long enough for his intended victim to make a run for his life. The bachelor roars to inform his comrades of his whereabouts and to intimidate his adversaries. The situation is serious. The young male's only hope is to flee his pursuer's territory, but he can't get out of the park. The chase has led to the hills above the lake. This is familiar ground for the bachelor and alien territory for the young male. But the hounded youngster has met up with a brother. Now it's two against one. contest has reached stalemate. The bachelor has an injured leg and one young male has a deep puncture wound in his neck. The bachelor roars for reinforcements. He has no intention of giving up now. Help is close at hand. The two adolescents are now in grave trouble. The bachelors present a united front. It's two against two, but the odds are heavily stacked in their favor. Juvenile males must get out of their enemy's range, but the bachelors have now taken over the whole park. The bachelors are hot and very tired, but they're relentless in their pursuit. is closing. Again, the bachelors have chased their foe to the fence. The young male now has nowhere to go. 
Desperate, he has to choose between certain death and an electric shock that's powerful enough to repel a rhino. The young male is now outside the park. He has escaped the lion's jaws and is safe for now. The bachelors won't touch the electrified fence, but the far side is no lion sanctuary. Scarface and the lionesses have left their former range in the south and followed the bachelors, their new kings, to the north. Everyone is here, except Kali. She's disappeared. The recent takeover has brought all the lionesses into season, and they're now ready to mate. Even Scarface is in estrus. The females will mate many times, but are unlikely to conceive for months. They want to be sure that the old pride males have been banished for good and that the new kings are here to stay before they have young. They don't want to lose cubs in yet another takeover. Outside the park, the young male lion is in danger of being shot. Unless the authorities act quickly, he could become a bad cat, a cattle hunter. The park staff have a choice. They can shoot the young lion or chase him back through a gap they've made in the fence. They choose the latter option. Once back in the safety of the park, the young male rejoins his brothers. It's only a matter of time before this band of four reach their prime. When they claim the pride for themselves, the consequences could cause the downfall of Scarface's pride. These young males are closely related to every female in the park. Inbreeding could become a serious problem. Nakuru is fenced. Unrelated lions cannot wander into the park. New blood cannot come in. The time has come for the authorities to intervene. <laughs> this 18-month-old male lion is a bad cat that was recently caught killing goats. By releasing him into Nakuru National Park, the authorities hope that he'll join up with the young males. If one day he becomes a king, he could inject the new blood the Nakuru pride so desperately needs. In the south, at Pride Rock, a lioness is in residence. Against all the odds, 
Carly has survived. She stayed in the South because she had two cubs. Carly not only recovered from her injury, but managed to rear youngsters at the same time. She was lucky to hide her babies from the marauding bachelors during the takeover. The old pride males are back too. After the takeover, they fled to the southern border of the park. Since the bachelors are away in the north, there was nothing to stop the old pride males from returning to their former throne. One of them is the father of Carly's cubs. A separate pride is now in the making. Kali is the new Queen of the South. Far in the north, Scarface, the Lion Queen, reigns with new kings. Daughters and granddaughters have all given birth. Scarface's pride is stable and strong. Presided over by a coalition of three males, they should be safe for several years. All these cubs have a good chance of reaching maturity. Scarface is now a great grandmother and nearly 14 years old. Amazingly, she too has cubs. These two tiny babies may be her last. The Nakuru experiment is proving successful. A balance between hunter and hunted is being restored. But while one problem is solved, another is raised. In years to come, inbreeding may rob the pride of a future. But for now, Scarface, once a bad cat, retains her title as Lion Queen of Nakuru. <laughs> <laughs>